Welcome to Family Gamer TV. Now, you don't get much bigger than a new Mario game in the world of family gaming. And we've just been trying out um, Super Mario 3D World. This is the game on the Wii U. And we played a similar game um, from the same team on the 3DS, um, Super Mario um, World 3D on that, on the 3DS. I really enjoyed it. But that's a game that you play on your own. Now, although all the kids were competing as they progressed through that game, trying to find all the coins, trying to get to the flag the quickest, they had to play it individually. On the Wii U, Super Mario 3D World takes the seed of that idea and really blows it up in sort of super-sized form. Um, so you, you play one of you with the um, gamepad and three other players with pretty much any other um, Wii U controller. Um, we used our old Wii remotes because we've got a whole bunch of those. Um, and you play together. And you progress through these 3D spaces, as you would imagine for a Mario game. And in them are hidden all sorts of surprises, um, sort of tricks to find, um, items to pick up, coins to collect, um, and something which, which we really like were a, a bunch of stamps. So each level has a stamp that you find, then at the end of the level, um, those stamps are added to your collection. Now this hooks into the other aspect that my family seemed to enjoy in um, Super Mario 3D World, which was the, the Miiverse. So you can send messages to your friends um, via that sort of social, social system. But with them, from Super Mario 3D World, you can use those stamps and sort of decorate your letters as you send those to friends and family. The game itself offers that traditional Mario overworld where you have different levels dotted around. As you complete each of those levels, you open more of that world and more levels to explore. Now, something my family struggle with, and it was still true to an extent in Super Mario 3D World, is because of the range of ages and range of abilities, um, there's a little bit of argument. So I'll often have to sort of get involved and play along to try and help the younger members or the less able members of the family um, keep up with the others. Because it, there's a sense of frustration if one of them gets left behind. And, and the game does its best, it opens up the camera so you can have a larger space. But eventually, the players at the back will get left behind. Um, and that can be frustrating if you're a younger player. I like the way um, Super Mario 3D World deals with this. So first of all, you're not out of the game if you get left behind. You pop into a bubble and you float to catch up with the other players. Equally, and this is what I was encouraging my kids to do, the other players can pick up um, each other and carry them along. Um, that means that if, one, if someone gets stuck or if someone needs to leave the room, you can still keep them with you because you pick them up and carry them along. Um, also, I like the way that the game um, dealt with extra lives. So you have a, a shared pool of lives rather than having separate lives for each player, which means that um, rather than one player being out when they've been out of lives, you have to work together. There's a much greater sense and focus on collaboration here. And something my family spent a lot of time on was choosing which of the characters to play. Um, so you can be Mario or Luigi, Princess Peach or Toad, and there's some more, more characters unlocked as you go on, but I won't spoil those for you now. And each of those characters, like in the old um, Super Mario Bros. 2 game, um, have the different abilities. So Mario is a sort of best all-rounder, Luigi can jump high, Peach can sort of float in the air, and Toad is super fast on the ground. And it meant that my kids experimented with those different characters, trying to work out which was their favourite. Now pretty much all those classic Mario power-ups are back, you know, f the fire, flower, the, the super-sized mushroom, all the ones we've sort of known through the years, the, the different suits that you can wear, sort of boomerang and tanuki suits. But as well as that, there's a new, what they're calling a cat transformation. Now this turns your particular player into a cat, um, which you can charge around the level on all fours. It's quite funny to see. But equally, that literally gives you access to different parts of the level. So you can run up walls, um, you have a sort of a cat swipe. And again, it just added a little bit more interaction um, and also different ways to solve the level. And as we played, each of my children sort of had their favourite suits. And there was some a sort of agreement between them about who would get which power up first. And that, you know, the person whose favourite it was would usually sort of claim the lion's share of that particular power up. Now, the game itself comes from the designs behind that 3DS version of the new Super Mario 3D World game. But also, that um, development tradition goes back to Mario Galaxy. Now, I'm not sure if you played that, but that was a really popular and um, very highly rated game on the Wii, Mario Galaxy, Mario Galaxy 2, that offered a, a more of a focus on sort of puzzle and little sort of snippets of um, challenge, puzzle challenges as you sort of made your way around the galaxy. And you see that here. There's certainly a, a greater sense of variety and a greater sense of puzzle solving here than we've seen in similar Mario games. And I think combining that with the four player um, sort of 
side of the action and the way that families need to cooperate um, to, to get through them meant that the whole family got involved. And my wife doesn't usually play um, these sort of married games with us, not that much anyway, but she was more than happy to, to come in and sort of see, see what was happening and pick up a controller and play along. Well, the older players in the family potentially may see Mario as a little bit too young for them. You know, if you're off into playing 16, 18 games, um, then you might overlook this. But I think there's just as much challenge here as there is in many of the sort of more mature titles um, that we see on the market. Equally, the sort of super young players in the family, the four, five, six-year-olds, initially they may find it a bit difficult to keep up with the other players. But like I said, there's lots of ways to help them along. And a little bit of practice, um, I think this is a game that they can really sort of take part in and join, join the rest of the family as a, as a sort of a valid member of the team. And it's that sense of teamwork um, that I came away with from Super Mario 3D World. So maybe some would ask, um, how has it taken so long for us to have a genuine 3D game um, with four players playing at the same time? It's been a long time since Mario 64. But I think the quality here um, and the sense of fun and enjoyment and the attention to detail perhaps warrants the fact that they wanted to wait until they could get it sort of pixel perfect um, to bring it out. If you're looking for that sort of experience in your family, I think this is a game that will stand the test of time. And I think we'll look back on this as a real watershed in terms of Mario moving forward and taking fresh steps into sort of new experiences. That's all we've got time for today on Family Gamer TV, but we'll be back with more soon.